It looks like I've caught the bus fever. My second bus, no name, bus two. That's all we got. We got bus two and bus three now. They're all different. It's so fun to see and you know, you're driving down the road after having a bus, you didn't realize it and you see them and you go, oh, I know that style or this style. It's pretty cool. Well, on this bus, sadly, this one falls into that category of somebody started the job and just was overwhelmed. You see those a lot. It's a lot more work than people think it is. They're very excited to do it and they want to have a bus, but it's so much work. And especially if you look online and you go by the rules of what you should do, you can get yourself where you're taking off the metal and you're stripping it all down and you're changing the floors and all these things and you never experience the bus. These people never put gas in it and owned it for eight months. And so it was a sad day actually because they paid more money than I did for it and they did eight months worth of work and they just were overwhelmed. And so when we got it, it was completely gutted, very nicely done, but completely gutted out. We had no idea what we we're gonna do. We kind of looked at, you know, maybe a beach theme again, cause we like that. I mean, that's part of the vacationing and everyone likes the beach. And so, and we had gone to Hawaii, so we just said, you know what, let's do an Hawaiian bus. And it does kind of go, one of the things I will say is when you're setting up the bus and trying to figure out what to do, leave yourself open to change because things are not going to go as planned a lot of times and you're going to go, wow, I got a better idea. And so the next thing you know, it just comes together. But, you know, what I typically will do is pick a spot in the bus and then that's what my day is. I'm gonna work on that area. Like I did the front end or I did the roof or you know something like that. It's all about looking for something that fits what you want. One of the other things that I will say that's convenient is to have the bus close to home. I'm lucky enough to have an area where I can park it right at my house. And then I set the goal to do something in the bus every day. And by doing that, you know, if, if I worked all day, because I have a full-time job, if I worked all day, I come home and I force myself to go out there, then I get motivated again, then I get excited again. But I can tell you, if I didn't do that, weeks would go by, and then maybe months would go by, and then like a lot of them, years would go by. So if you really want to get it done and you're, and you're serious about doing a bus, and I mean, some people might want to take a year or two years, it's not my style. I like to do it real fast. So, But if you do something every day, you're going to see progress and it's going to motivate you for the next day. Let's go. Well, these stairs were kind of a hard thing to do, actually. There was only plywood down, so the people that owned it did put plywood on it. I found all this wood flooring on Craigslist and got the whole floor wood floor stuff for about $300. It's the one thing that I had someone else help me with. So I had a guy come over and help me cut it all in because he had the right stuff. And I'm more of a guy that cuts it close to being good, but not precise like a flooring guy would. Um, and he left this bottom step undone because he didn't know how to wrap it or how to do it. And this actually happened about two weeks ago. I went into Lowe's trying to figure out what am I going to do with this side and this side. And actually this whole little entry here was completely stripped in all metal. And this was a $8 place mat or, you know, a, a walk mat thing and just cut it off, sprayed on a little glue and it works perfect. And then it covered this part. So it kind of matches up, you know, it's just, that's I say, you can just find a spot to work on. And actually that was a morning. That whole morning was just this little section right here. And, you know, the guys at Lowe's all know me really well because I just walk. They got about six areas that are clearance and I'm constantly just looking and saying, oh, maybe I can use that. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of how it all happens for me. Like even this, 
Because when I got the bus, there was nothing in here at all to get in. So you got up here, there was the stairs, but nothing to grab onto. And I'm thinking, how am I going to make something? But this stuff works great. And you know, you can get these cut to size at Lowe's. You don't have to be a plumber or anything to do it and just kind of figure out how you can do it. Well, as you can see, a lot of it's not finished yet. So we're still in the process of working on this bus. But this section here was all just kind of metal gutted. And they had taken off pieces and, and they weren't with the bus when we got it. So it was all about how we were going to try to figure it out. This right here was all the way to the front. Just the metal front. And you could see actually the metal right at the very front of it. On this right here, I wanted to utilize as much space as possible and still not be in the way of the driver and that and, and kind of aim us up towards the front. So this is a completely built-in box that can be used for storage or anything else. We haven't cut in anything. You could do it from the bottom. You could put your stereo system or whatever you're going to do, but I've kind of just left it for something. So that right there got all framed in. This fireplace I picked up, this is actually a heater and fireplace I picked up at a garage sale for, I think it was $30. In Arizona, they don't sell for a lot because no one needs them. Yeah, that area there is not completely finished, but I think I'm going to keep the seat. It's got an air seat in it that, you know, I'll just put a cover on it and that's it. Well, I'll tell you, on this one with the flat front, it's completely different from the one I'm used to or the one that I started with. It's got the motor in the front. And I was a little leery about it. Didn't really like the look of a bus like that. But after driving it, it's very easy to see. It's really kind of handy to park. You can really see really well. And this motor in the back, it's quieter. And it goes pretty fast compared to my motor in the front. I got a Caterpillar in my other one. More of a in the city kind of run around. This one here would take you somewhere. Which is, which is one of the reasons that we went ahead and got it because the other bus, it would be a long journey across country, which that's fine if you're just, that's another thing I will say, if, if you're a bus owner, if you're gonna be a bus owner, plan on driving easy and slow. You know, today we're gonna drive up to Sedona in my other bus, and I've been advised, just put it in third gear when you're climbing hills, and if you're going 25 or 30 miles an hour, that's what you're doing. And if you're, like me, normally I'm, pressing the gas and trying to keep up with everybody, that's not going to be the bus life. And you have to know that up front. There's a lot of people that I've talked to that done a bunch of work on a bus and then they take it on a trip and they're going, this, what's wrong? There's something wrong with this motor. It's not very strong. It's just the way it is. And so it kind of fits the whole lifestyle, I think. Slow down. What we did when we were trying to figure out furniture for this bus is we wanted it to be something someone could change out. This is a sleeper couch that you can get on Amazon. I think it was like, literally, I think it was less than 200 bucks. But it's pretty comfortable. And all you got to do is put a little thing, a cup to set those legs in and it'll stay pretty sturdy. Um, so that's what the couch is all about. This little section right here was completely open. This was not here. Again, it's one of those things you can get uh, some galvanized pipe and have it cut for the size you want just bolt it down you know the one nice thing about buses there's a ton of beams that you can bolt things down and they're solid they're very solid you can actually put that kind of stuff in there you know it was the galvanized pipe that just kind of i knew i'd have to paint it or something but then i thought well let's just wrap some rope on it and walking around and looking at all there's like believe it or not there's like 10 or 20 different colors of rope and so we were just kind of trying to match things. Bring it out, spring some color out, make That's it good. kind of fun. And, it, and it's a little easier on your hand. I'm thinking that it might get hot, but it's, it's not that hot in here. But that's part of the reason we went with the rope. Yeah. This whole roof area kind of developed because the, the previous owners had stripped off the entire ceiling. And, you know, it was just bare metal and beams. And my first original thought was to plywood it and make it a nice, pretty, warm, you know, wood. Um, but it's very difficult to get the things to match perfect and bend. Because you bend it this way and then it bows out on the sides. And it's very, so really to do these ceilings 
what I saw was basically strips is the easiest way if you're going to do wood. So we did, went through the whole trouble of foaming it, putting spray foam in, and then putting plywood up. Didn't look right. We went to this stuff. I thought, well, I'm going to try some of this bamboo. That would be great. It would bend and it would sit right. But literally, this stuff is so heavy that I, it was like holding a bear and trying to screw something in and there was no way it was staying. So that ended up moving somewhere lower to the ground. <laughs> and then I went into Lowe's walking around. I'm going, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Should I do the wood? I looked at places that, that have that, you know, barn wood stuff and it would have been very expensive, very expensive. This stuff here, I think for a 12 foot piece, 12 by three maybe, it's like $18 a sheet. So literally this is pretty inexpensive to put on. And it's got a good look. And it holds, like if you want to do stuff, we've got a bunch of magnets. And so you can basically put things up everywhere with some good, you get some good magnets and hooks on them and it really will hold everything you want. It makes almost everything a spot where you can put something. You know, we put electric in, so we got lighting. I've got plugs pretty much all on the top. And so this right here hasn't been finished yet, but this is my channel to run all my wires. Until I'm completely finished, before I'll put more screws down and solid it up, but um, just running stuff across the top. One of the other things that, I love buses, I love the seat, or the um, windows, but double window really gives a lot of people from the outside more view than maybe you want when you're living in here. And I didn't want to get rid of the windows, so my thought was, let's just keep the top window. And I had talked to my painter, who's phenomenal. Um, he says, if you put a uh, good primer on that glass, he can just paint right on it with his mural. So I've said, well, we're building up to the top, to that level. And so the way this thing is, you can basically just open them up like that. And so... And you can see out, and really no one can see a lot, especially from down below. So it gives you privacy, but it still gives you a lot of ventilation. And obviously you can see out. So this TV that we picked up at a garage sale was $25, and it had a remote. When you're looking for used TVs or something like that, make sure it's got the remote. It makes life easier. So yeah, this is on an antenna right now, and it works beautiful. I mean, believe it or not, antenna works better than cable or any of that stuff as far as quality of picture. The table was a $10 find on Craigslist. It's an old one, you know. The thing is, a table like that works great in a bus like this, but most people aren't putting that in their house anymore. And so they just want to get rid of it. And so if you can take the time and just kind of search through, you'll find stuff that are decent enough for something you're doing here. I mean, it's got a nice feel on it so that you can, if something spilled on it or something, it's not going to be a problem. It's basically something that you can take out and change to something else if you want it. So if somebody else came in here and said, you know what, I got to have another couch or I got to have, it's not a built in. And that's one of the things that I kind of wanted to do with this bus is make it everything so that someone else could come in and make it theirs if they got it from me. Yeah, the wheel wells are always a challenge because they're a lot farther apart than you think. And so like on this one here, I had to take the back leg off and make something so that it would fit right. Usually a couch or something like that covers it pretty well. The one thing that I didn't do is build a bunch of shelving and storage places. We've got quite a bit, but it's room, there's room for more. I've seen a lot of uh, buses that have bunk bed setups and a lot of places to sleep, but you know, maybe somebody wants this, it's just a couple or even a single person. So they wouldn't need that. So when you're building, so I'm actually, just so, just so you know, I'm actually building the idea, because I own a bus already, is to build a bus for someone else and make it so that someone else could make this their home. Um, travel around. I, I hear a lot more people that work from um, the internet or online and they don't have to pay rent or anything else and they can pick where they want to be. And every if you don't like it here, then you go there. So it's kind of a neat way to live if you can do it. And some people, more and more people can do it nowadays. When I was growing up, 
You had to go to a job. There was no any staying at home and working. But I see it a lot now. It's a blessing. One of the things that I did on this bus is I'm going with a wireless Bluetooth speaker uh, system versus wiring in. If anyone saw the last video, I really went out, of, out there for a stereo system with subwoofers and everything else. But it drains on the battery and it's just in the bus. And what we're finding when we go somewhere and hang out, we're outside of the bus a lot and on the deck. And so a speaker like this, you could buy for three or $400, a good one. I suggest getting a good one that'll hold a long period of time of, of charge and then bring it where you want to. If you're at a lake and you wanna go fishing, bring it down there, you know? So these might be a, a good way, even though it was $300, it saves you money because if you were to put a system in it's more than three hundred dollars and you can't use it as much i mean i would crank up the bus inside and be out there but it's only going through this hole and so it's just not loud enough for me i like loud music this table right here again was just an amazon i mean i'm sure a lot of people that are seeing this is they recognize some of this stuff but this thing here is really a neat little setup because every one of these is storage and so it's kind of fits into the bus idea now how often do you need it i don't know if you're sitting there you could actually sit four people maybe play cards or something like that i put this bar in as kind of more or less for sitting here look out got the windows open you can look outside and you can eat your breakfast and if you've got people over the other thing i did was put this all, all along this whole side so if you did have a handful of people in here, place to set your beer kind of all over. So it's kind of a nice thing. They're not sitting on the edge of the couch or something. So this refrigerator I got at Lowe's, again on the clearance aisle. You can find little dents that mean nothing, you know? So to me, and it's a good size, it's got a freezer in it and it works really well. And I think I paid $179. So the refrigerator is AC but I've got AC all in here. So I'm kinda, I've got, you'll see on the roof, I've got room for solar. I'm definitely interested in doing solar and that whole setup, but I have seen some of the RV refrigerators that run on gas and, but I've heard so many things about them not working very well. And for the price, this thing is really nice and it's a nice size. It still gives me almost like a tabletop here, but yeah, it works out really well. It's a, it, 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 you can feel it's freezing cold in here. These chairs were, um, again, Amazon. I know that a lot of people have probably seen this, but the nice thing about these, they stack. So if I wanted to, I could stack all four together and it's in one spot here. And so what you're gonna see when I'm done with this thing and I'm not quite done is some kind of a, a bungee strap when we're traveling down the road, but they got a nice rubber feet on them so they, they don't slide around and it's really a cool thing to sit here and see camp. I really like this. This was kind of a, this was the very first thing we put in this bus beside the roof because I just was like, I'm going to make a bar. I've got to have a bar. There's a bar in my backyard that's a 70s. It's got the cushions on it. It's a drinking bar. It's the old style. And the first day I brought it home, I carried that bar and put it in here and that was my start i'm like this is gonna be great i'm gonna have a big bar my wife was not having that she she finally convinced me that we didn't need a traveling bar <laughs> but yeah all electric so this one here is on a, like we can walk by it's got a um, motion sensor on it and a, a light so if it's it's daytime it won't come on but yeah these all these all work this was another clearance sale i mean if you got the time, I would stop into the store all the time at Lowe's or Home Depot or in a lot of cases, I'm out on the construction site. So a lot of stuff gets thrown away nowadays. A lot of stuff. If you look at the wood in here, most of this wood I've found in dumpsters. So anything you're wanting to do, it's kind of funny and I kind of passed it up. But this stuff here, this was something I found in Camp Verde way back at an estate sale and there was like four or five bagfuls. They were stacks of them. And what they were accent stuff, but it was from the 70s. And the front of it, I have it. I, I actually put it on this wall over here. 
and you just nail gun it with a staple gun type kind of thing and it really dresses the whole thing up because all of this was set up with plywood and then I was trying to figure out how to put it on there sadly this whole wall is done but then I put the cabinet in front of it but if we ever move the cabinet which it's got uh, it's got these feet from the bottom that you could actually take it out pretty easy if you wanted to switch things around and then that's set up one of the other things like simple things this right here is super sharp and so just go down to Lowe's look at your molding and this sticks on it's just peeled off and stuck on both sides and it actually works out really well it was like five dollars for a stretch of 10 to 12 foot and then it's and it looks finished so but like like I was saying earlier this is still capable there's a channel in there that you can still run wire in obviously a couple screws I could bring it right back out and rerun it because I know times change mm -hmm. you know I wire houses for a living so I know and I wire like computer stuff and stereo stuff and somebody else might want to really put this in a nice stereo system and that so but I'm kind of looking at cost going what makes the most sense and so that's why I didn't put the stereo in yeah yeah I don't have any money I really don't I'm I'm broke all the time. I go out and work just to make a little bit of money so I can have extra for, for this. But, you know, you can find things. Like this table, for instance, was only $120, I think, brand new. And the great thing, too, is if you find something like that, I didn't like it. My wife loves it, and I kind of gave in on it because it does have storage, and it's pretty compact. I had another table that I found at a garage sale that was 70s, and it had the rolling wheels and everything on it, and it was really cool. And I still have it, but for this bus, she didn't want it. So that's what's happening now is I'll see something, and it doesn't fit in this bus, but I'll put it away for something else. So I got a storage room full of just miscellaneous now. And really, honestly, this happened one year ago when I started my first bus. And this bus I started, I think it was um, in May when I got this bus. So it's only been two, three months actually three and a half maybe somewhere in that range but you just stay on it it's really really fun these doors are going to be that's going to be access for loading your kitchen stuff and whatever basically and you never know i mean you could be parked somewhere where this makes sense if you were to i'm still thinking on my water system on this one because i'm going to go full-blown nice system my original plan was to have some kind of a sink that came out of the ceiling with a flex hose on it that I could bring outside for a shower, which I've seen done. And there's a shower on the other side of this. I even thought of having it so that it would go in that way. But now I'm gonna actually, I think I'm gonna do a full shower in there with regular water and everything. But if you were to try to build a bus and just try to utilize, you know, and keep it as simple as possible, you could do something that would work for the sink, work for the shower outside or inside and just have one line come in and just keep it simple. Then you only have one thing that can break down on you. So these cabinets we found in a tear out. Somebody replaced them all in their house. I was trying to figure out what to do with these walls. And honestly, this is the, this is the vinyl flooring that you peel off and you put on the floor in the kitchen. And it doesn't hold hard enough to stay on the side so you just take a little staple gun nail gun and staple it in there and then once it dries it's on there good and I ended up doing it on this back wall and the nice thing about it you can wipe it off it's really clean and it gives you kind of a wood look so it gives you the wood look without actually having because I know if I wanted this in real wood there would be stains and stuff over time that would get on there and you really can't clean it so this thing makes it really nice. This top, it's ironic, but Monday I'm doing a job for a company that does um, granite. And I'm gonna talk to them about doing a granite piece on here. This sink was a find that I found at a garage sale two weekends ago, or last weekend actually. I've been looking at sinks. I've got a beautiful green 70s sink that I found at a garage sale that I was gonna do. It's a little big and so my wife was like, you got to go with something a little smaller. We don't need that big sink. And so I was at a garage sale and there was five or six boxes that had not been opened. And they were, uh, it said Kitchen Island. And I saw one of the boxes said sink on it. And I was like, how much for that pile of stuff? He goes, 10 bucks takes it all. And I was like, he goes, I could take it out of the box and show you. And I said, you know what, for $10, I'm going to take a chance and bring it home and see what I got. I opened it up. 
the sink box and this is the sink that came with that brand new never been opened before you can pull this up turn it you can actually i'm going to set it right on the edge so you could actually fill up a big tub off the side if you needed to or but it folds down nice and then it has the cutting boards right on top which are, to me is perfect for this size bus. Yeah. This was actually from a barbecue. I think Charbroil or somebody makes them and they're, they were, they're not cheap, but he bought it, never put it together. It's like a, a Kia thing where you have to make, you know, put it all together and he never did. And so there it was, this thing here, it's got a, it's really cool because it's got a hose connect right on the back. So, you know, no matter what size bus or what kind of, deal you're doing you could do this sink if you can find these on craigslist or something um, be a good good sink i think uh, size wise i like it i like the separate spot it's actually uh, got a spot if you did have a garbage disposal over here or even just a garbage right you can kind of open that one up and dump everything inside there if you're cutting a bunch of vegetables or something not much else left on this side just uh this is our walkway into the bedroom we wanted to make sure the bedroom was kind of separated completely and big enough. Okay, so this is our bedroom. I wanted to have it big enough so that you could kind of move around. This is a good seat that can see all the way through to the front. Of course, this is a rear view mirror that I don't use anymore. And so mounting it long ways, it works out great for sitting here. My wife will put her makeup on and stuff right here, I think, or somebody's wife, or maybe some, uh, who knows. <laughs> And then, uh, so this was the original framing of this bus. Uh, it was all metal. The motor is right below it. I sat back here and tried to figure out how could I make a bedroom and not util or lose this space. You know, obviously I could have done something this way and done, but I found this dresser, which um, I think this was Craigslist for $20. And it's got nine drawers in it. Right now it's holding all the miscellaneous parts that I've been working on. And so I have it all kind of categorized, but it'll hold all your clothes you need, I think, for this kind of a, if you're traveling around on a bus. And there's a back window there. I found those blinds in the dumpster. They're remodeling the house next door and I look in it every day. <laughs> you just never know. And there was some blinds there that worked good. And I was like, I think I can use that in the back. There's a three quarter inch plywood that I screwed down on top of this. I, I put anchors on this and then I screwed down to there. This had wood on it that I used also and screwed straight down. So the plywood has got a bunch of screws in it. This whole section here is gonna be storage. So everything you see from here this way goes all the way back. And the idea then, I could cut out a door right there. Right now I can just crawl in there and grab stuff, but that's kind of left for possibly my power supplies and stuff. I'll put everything inside this and then seal it off and open it from the top of the, the bed. But that's kind of, I just wanted to utilize every bit of the space. And I, and I kind of like a lot, I see a lot of these and you kind of just get into the bedroom and that's the bed and there's really no room. With this, this door right here, we found in Camp Verde, this is a, an old bar door swing doors and I found those at an estate sale in the back of a garage that was just been sitting there forever and said you know what that's gonna work and so I have the other side of this for the door in my bathroom and so it's just kind of a swing door but that's if you're sitting in here you got a little privacy you no know, one can really see in it and it's it's handy well that's the whole thing you're always working with this edge right and so everything you do and it's it's pretty hard to make cuts to work so this thing does kind of look good and when you shut it you can still see over it so if I wanted to I could see what's going on in the front of the bus well we were looking at this I mean I could have easily there's there is the air intake which is built right there and it's a it's a plastic kind of a thing hood thing so I just framed around it and put anchors underneath and and got that box in and then I said man you know it's always nice to have something you can set remotes or phone and that kind of stuff because i have a plug over here and on that side and so i wanted to have uh, even drinks or something off that bottom so i've got a couple of different shelves and then this right here funny thing was i i had put this in first and i just went straight across from here 
and put the bed in, got the mattress. And I told my wife, hey, this is awesome, right? She's like, no, because you actually were under it when you laid your head. And she goes, I know I'm going to get up and smack my head. So I came in here with just the saw and changed it. <laughs> but that's the great thing about buses. I mean, you could just change it to whatever you want. For me, it would have been fine. I told her, well, you can sleep this way then. And she's like, come on, don't, don't, get, don't get lazy now. And so, yeah, we just kind of did that. And I found this little piece of scrap and thought, well, it gives it a little design. But everything, the big thing is, is like everything is bolted down tight and it just feels tight. Everything is nice and there's not anything going to fall apart. And so you can just do it, you know, so that it really is nice and everything holds. So, so this is the shower and the idea, the, the people that had the bus changed out the emergency doors for skylights on both sides. I'll show you the other one. Uh, we made it as we put it back as an emergency door, but didn't want to lose the skylight. Um, kind of liked having a skylight up there, but I was thinking, how cool would it be in in a shower? And if I open this thing, I'm going to do something that's going to close this off, so at nighttime it's still, or in the morning it won't be too bright. But um, it's really cool to see the stars. And literally, you can still see from the bed if you wanted to, if you're laying here. But taking a shower and looking up, pretty neat, pretty neat. I mean, you could see right there, there's a, the deck. So if I was in here taking a nap or something during the day and people were hanging out, I could kind of keep an eye on what's going on too. Got to keep an eye on my wife, you know. But yeah, this is all set up. I'm going to be putting this kind of material on the outside. Again, cost. They do make, I did get the, I splurged a little bit and got an actual real floor for the, for the shower. And you can get the side things, but it's, it's two or three hundred bucks. And so, you know, everything costs money. You just got to kind of see if, what works. And actually, I think having this stuff around the outside will, will work just as well and have a good look. This thing here, this is our whole bathroom. And I know it's going to be kind of hard to see in there, but... This, um, this back paneling tile is just a, it's just a sticker. You know, you just, you buy them in strips. I can show you some. It's like $5 for four sheets of it. And that's all been plywood and it was a nice smooth plywood. And so I was able to just stick it on there and it gives it a nice tile look. And then that's your door. So you got a little, little door in here that you can, uh, and that's going to be the composting toilet when Chris gets one over to me. When I get some money together, I guess. I'm looking for him to pull out the scratch and dent one. So, and that's, again, this is the stuff I was talking about. If they made that today, it would be amazing because it's so easy to cover things with and it's got a good look to it. And it literally, so one of those bags that I was talking about earlier would do this whole room, one bag. And I bought like four or five bags for $20. I was at an estate sale in Camp Verde, um, which is pretty far from here, but I like the area for that. A lot of farms and stuff like that and old houses. And walked out and I was leaving going, well, nothing here. And there they sat right on the edge of the tail. I'm like, what are those? And so, yeah, you just keep your eye out and then kind of think about where could I use something like that? And it really is kind of fun to do that. Same stuff as the flooring. This is that vinyl flooring. And you know, you can see this is just the plywood here. And I just nailed it up after you peel it off and it's sticky. Stick it on there. It's super easy. You can actually cut this with scissors. So it's no saws or anything. And you're just sitting here doing it really easy. And it's got, I mean, you can literally wipe it off. Everything. So it's a really handy thing. A bunch of this stuff is $60. I mean, you get a box full of it and it comes in different sizes. So you don't even have to cut them. You just kind of start working it and 60 bucks. And they got four or five different colors. Lowe's, Home Depot, all places have it. And it, I like it. I think it really works out well. So this is our way up to the deck again. I have to have a deck in every bus. I think it's going to be a must. Uh, just because when you're up there, it's so much cooler and the view is incredible. Plus, we have this sturdy bus to hold it. You know, unlike an RV, 
this will hold a deck, no problem. But again, it's one of those things where the opening's small, and so if you get a little off balance, you're, being, you're held by that opening. But this is the top. Now, this top we did completely different. Um, you can kind of see that other deck that on my other bus right there. <laughs> my neighbors love me, by the way. I hope. But this one here, again, wanted to keep the deck up when we travel. And so I went with a 12 foot, four inch height on the top part of this. And these I picked up at Lowe's. This is fencing that you would buy just standard. They're about this tall, typically. And they have that same size kind of a metal deal on it. And so I cut off the bottom, put the top back on it. And then I got these little L bracket deals and stuck the two by sixes in, or two by fours. And this actually is more solid than that one. It's not as high. So you have to be careful. I mean, this wouldn't be as much for, like on that bus, I could put kids up there and not even worry about them and not even be up there with them, really. Uh, this one here, I'd be a little more worried. But actually, I'm thinking about, you've probably seen on, on like a um, bunk bed setup where you can take the tops off and it's got kind of a bracket down and then the board goes across and be able to slide those in. And then when you're not using it, maybe put it on the next level down. So you could raise that up pretty easily. I'm still working on finding those brackets, but I think that's gonna be the goal. Cause I do wanna make it, you know, so that you don't have to worry about anybody. Mm -hmm. These things here are really great. These are uh, same thing. You get it in the same, same place as your fencing. These are to tie two fences together, but they fit perfect. And so I bracket that underneath and then I can take, these are my solar lights that are up here and I can take those on and off and then just put them right back on when I get somewhere. On my other one, I'm zip tying. So this one here, I've eliminated the zip tie. I don't need them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, it's just like with these umbrellas, we just had monsoon so storms come by and it was blowing like crazy. I had the umbrellas strapped down and tied off, but they, were, they stayed up here during that storm. And all I did was put a, just drill a hole through there and it locks that umbrella in place. They're all hollow, it's just that rubber piece. Now that rubber piece, I, I might do something a little different, but if I'm traveling, I am taking that off completely for the height. But when you get landed, it's a big deal because uh, every time when I'm out with that bus, if it gets windy and you've got zip ties on it, it's sometimes not enough. I mean, and you're watching this um, and you're going, is it gonna take off? Because if you're up this high and you're with a bunch of people, and this thing takes off, you can kill someone. So it's very, it was very scary for me. So I kind of had to think of a better way, honestly. So this one here will not come off. Now this thing might end up bending and breaking, but it ain't coming out of that. And they're all bolted down underneath. So it's, it's pretty secure. And as you can feel, I mean, as I do these things, I get better at them. So my L brackets are all right into the studs. And, you know, you don't feel any kind of problems up here. This one didn't have the ribs on it that I had on the other. So once I put these on, I put a two by six in or two by four in and then screwed it down to kind of stabilize the middle. The, my other bus had, you can probably see a little bit of them there. They were already there. It's the ribs that are on the side of the bus. And so that gave me a little more spot in the middle that it wasn't just touching the middle and the ends. Now I've got it in the middle too here. Well, as far as the wood goes, I probably should have spent more money. I went with the cheapest stuff they had because it's a little rough. So you could get some that are really smooth and, sit and more of a deck, but I think these were five bucks a piece. And so, you know, my thing was is, I guess I could always sand them down, but I'm not having, you know. But yeah, you could sand it. If you bought this stuff, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but if you want to spend a little time sanding it before you put anything on, definitely work great. Right. Basically did this whole deck by myself in a day. So it really, I came, I went and got all this stuff, got it started painting it. And as that was drying, I was laying out the other brackets. So just kind of worked it through, just time yourself and get it figured out. And you can do these things pretty quick. I know that, you know, if you're not, the first one took, a long time honestly to be honest with you i couldn't figure out how to do it 
But once you get a system, you can do it. And then once you get the basic idea, so these things here I really liked because I didn't have to get somebody else involved. I'm not a welder. I want to be, um, and I plan to be, um, because there's so many things you can do. But um, as it sits right now, I'm not a welder, so I was trying to figure out how to keep from waiting. Because that's, you know, honestly, that's something that previous owners had problems with, is they didn't have skills in certain things. And finding someone to, to help them was a real problem. I mean, they didn't know who to pick, and because they're not like contractors where they're seeing electricians and stuff all the time. And so they're basically just guessing. And then as, as things get busy, especially here in Arizona, the housing stuff gets busy. Jobs like this are pretty hard to get someone to come over and do. And if you do, there's probably a reason. <laughs> They're probably not that good or they'd be somewhere else. So yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you do as much as you can by yourself and keep it simple. These things here, I mean, it's a little labor, there's no question, but if you set up a nice little rack to hold your stuff when you're painting, just I'll say this, one thing that screams at me when it comes to these kind of projects, and even when I went and bought this bus, it was filthy inside when I went in it, and they were selling it. And there was garbage in it, there was dirt everywhere. If you're gonna take on a project like this, every day I clean up before I leave it, no matter what I'm doing. And that way the next day I come in, I've got a nice view of things and I've got, but if you're completely, and, and you know, try to organize where your tools are, where your screws and stuff are, you're gonna go through a lot of screws. And so just have the different sizes, everything organized, and it's gonna make your life so much better. You'll spend so much less time searching for stuff and you'll be able to do the project a lot better. Plus, it's always nice to walk in and it's nice and it's basically, you come out here and have a beer and every day you can sit out here. You don't have to sit in the pile of, you know, dust and dirt and stuff. It's kind of a crazy thing because if you saw my inside of my truck, it's a mess. But my job sites have got to be clean and it definitely helps. Again, I left a big spot. We talked about maybe doing a deck the whole distance back, but actually it's too much deck. I mean, I guess if there is such a thing, maybe there's not. We do want to do solar. We're really big on trying to get off the grid and have some kind of a system where you could be gone for a little while and not have to worry about it. And really, generators work great, but toting around gas and everything else, it's just, you know, it's just not as good as not toting around gas. <laughs> so. And again, you know, these, these chairs, super cheap. They're like $15, brand new. They, what we're doing now is we just bungee them to the bottom. I picked up some little ideals and I'm gonna have it set up so that there's a, there's a system in how to pack. But it's just nice to have it up here, this whole deck and carrying stuff. You could put so much stuff up here. And if you did decide, I mean, I just uh, talked to a guy who's, he's got his bus, he's using it to move. Those things hold a ton of stuff, man. And so he's moving to California to live on a boat for a year. And he wants one of my buses undone so that he can just use the inside because I've just put carpet in it. And it's just kind of ready for me to work on next. And he's like, I want it just like that because, and then I'll bring it back and you can work on it. And I'm like, well, we'll see. Okay, well, here's the outside. And again, we've got the paint job on here by a phenomenal mural painter that uh, we just absolutely love. He's, we're going to show you somewhere in this um, how to get in touch with him or see his web page because he does, he paints a lot of stuff. He painted the Bass Pro Shop. All the murals inside of a lot of different places. I've seen hospital, like children's hospitals. He's painted all the, the stuff inside there for the kids. It's, he's phenomenal and he typically does fences and backyards and stuff but he also paints little pictures. He's just an amazing person. And so what we told him was, we kind of want a Hawaiian theme. You know, we started out with the idea of a jungle theme, but because he does this beautiful waterfalls when he does some of his backyard murals. But the problem is, is these ribs, because when he paints down, he makes it look like it's all falling down and these things make it basically impossible. So on a nice smooth spot, he can really do 
a complete forest and the mist so what you get is the whole mist from the water and but that is almost impossible with some of this stuff here which it's amazing to me how well he is able to paint with those ribs on there and still give it a look you know like it's one solid line but and of course we had to have a bird and one of the things we did with these windows like this is the back where my refrigerator is and so i had him paint that all the way through he if we put primer on here he says the paint will stick just like it does to the metal and you know what we end up with is more of a streamlined window and not such a big opening and i talked about that inside a little bit but it gives us a little more surface to have a, a mural or a paint job on it. So it's kind of a nice way to really break it up. I know a lot of people put metal on them and I get it on the last bus, so I get it. But this kind of makes it nice because I could still open those windows. And when you open all the windows in the bus on a nice little breezy day, it really feels nice. And that's part of the, part of the neat thing about them, you know. So this section in here, we wanted some more flowers. We've got, uh, the back. We didn't do anything like the last one where we had different scenes on the all corners because people told me that a lot of people don't want uh, too much craziness but uh, you know I like it that way. But So this one here was another one. This side we've got this pole in the way but it's actually another Hawaiian. It's all Hawaiian and he's put some Hawaiian flowers on it. And you know, everything he does, I, I wish you could see some of the way he does things. It just goes right on, it's crazy. And then all of a sudden, there it is, it looks beautiful. He spent a little more time on this. So he did one side, about one and a half on each day. But we're talking about the hottest days. It, it was literally 115 degrees both days. And he got here at like five in the morning and by 10 o'clock in the morning, it was too hot to paint because the paint was drying before he could even get to the thing. It was, you know, it's a dry heat here in Arizona. If it was a nice day, like, it's funny because he painted my other bus in the worst, it was 120 degrees that day. And so for some reason, we could like, we've lined it up so that we end up on the same hottest day of the year. But if he had a nice day, I almost would bet that he could paint the entire bus in a day. He's that good. And it's just, it's funny because he's over here and then he's, over here real quick and the, and the next thing you know it just all comes together and it's really amazing to watch he, he's really really talented and on top of that a super person just a real good person one of those guys that would give you the shirt off his back and so this is what you see so there's a downside to doing this this was done prior to us getting the bus this metal pieces they took the windows out and they put these in here and i'll tell you where we have a problem that's our bedroom and it would be really nice to have ventilation running through. And so by doing that, you really don't get the air. We're gonna definitely do AC and probably a fan. Well, the AC will have some kind of a fan if we just want a fan only, but you have to. But honestly, if we had the windows there, it would have really made it a way better. Cause that ventilation, that's the, one of the great things about these buses is there's a lot of windows. Obviously the bad part is you could see in there a lot. So I think that why the whole painting of the bottom set works out well plus it also gives you that height inside the bus so that you can build some stuff and have your cabinets and stuff a little higher up if you open the back window and that if you can get some ventilation yeah, you, you can, can do that but you know it's surprising those doors those those back door things they're heavy these things are really really heavy and yeah it will open up but it's you know you got to prop it up somehow now, I haven't quite gotten to how to do that, but it is going to be uh, something that has to be done because you, you know, you want the fresh air. That's part of the reason you're out and about, right? So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and he took those out. We probably could have done a better job of making it look smooth and stuff. But again, it's one of those things you could spend a ton of time on stuff or you can get it close. <laughs> you know, you can see on this bus, they put a plate over those. And so... That probably makes more sense. These people went through a lot by taking that off and then putting a plate on the inside and actually a plate on the outside, as you can see side by side, seems to make a little more sense, cleaner look. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, one of the things too that I did run across on my first bus is the 
cost of tires. So when you're searching for a bus, if you see a bus and it's three or five or 10, whatever amount it is, make sure you check the tires and check the year of the tire because you could see, you know, they're, they're not gonna run down the tread as fast as they will just in time. And so you'll end up with a tire that looks really good, but it's 10 years or, or older and you just don't wanna be on the road and have a breakdown like that. And it's not safe to drive and have a blowout on your rig. So check tires, and if you don't have good tires, I mean, it shouldn't be the deal breaker, but keep that in mind because I shopped around for a year before I finally, because I'm a crazy shopper. I Craigslist, I'm looking every day to find something. I ended up getting the new tires on this bus for like $760 installed and balanced and everything. Um, but... I went to probably no less than 20 different places that all had prices of over $2,000 for the set. So you could easily spend more money for a set of tires than you did for the entire bus. And so those are the kinds of things, you know, I know Tony over at AAA Buses talked a little bit about, you know, what to look for in the motor part of it. But the things that a person like me that's not a mechanic can, can really pass on is tires and that kind of stuff. Those are things you want to look at. And the other thing I will say is, if you have a specific kind that you're looking for, don't settle. So like one of the things that came up with this bus, I did not want a flat front on my bus because my idea for buses originally was going camping. And camping is typically done on dirt roads and where you maybe get off the road a little bit and do something and the wheels are set back on the flat front. And so by the time, if you were to go up a wash or something, by the time the tire actually starts to go up, your front end has hit the, the front of it. So by having your wheels up front or up closer to the front, your wheels start to climb and your clearance will get you up a little better. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. I mean, a lot of people, like this bus would be a great bus for traveling and wanting to run the coast or, you know, that kind of stuff, where you're camping at specific places that are easy to get in and out of. But if you're gonna take back roads and go camping or hunting or any of that fishing, stuff like that, you might consider that when you're picking that bus out. And that's kind of, plus the other thing was, is we went with the front motor because of the traditional look to it. It's kind of a cool look. But we're, as we, you know, that's the crazy thing. You drive around and you see buses everywhere and you know every every single one of them seem to be different mm -hmm. and it, after you've done a few buses and gotten involved in it you as soon as you see one you go this is what i could do to that thing and so you fall in love with them all really mm -hmm. um, i look at a bus anymore like a work of art they're just they're really an amazing vehicle and you know i've heard rumor and i'm not a hundred percent sure but I would say the school probably paid a hundred plus thousand for this bus. And then when they auction them off, they just need them gone. And, and that's what happens to a lot of people too. They buy a bus, which is another thing to consider. When you buy a bus and you think you're gonna work on it and stuff and you're getting this great deal, maybe you got this great deal, $3,000 for a bus. Well, you don't have a place to put it. So now you've got to store it somewhere that's gonna cost you money. And some of the things that have come up on a bus that I just bought, if you have to have title and insurance on the bus to be able to store it in some places. So the next thing you know, uh, uh, something you're gonna work on for a year has now cost you an extra thousand dollars just to park it. And so that's something to keep in mind as well, because you know, especially if you're not gonna do it right away or if you're not gonna use it right away, it's gonna cost you money to park it and stuff like that. And plus then it, it's not with you. So it's another factor to keep in mind when you're picking out a bus. And, you know, obviously the bigger the bus, the bigger the price for storage. It's a lot of fun, though. I absolutely love school buses now. I've called myself a schoolie. I mean, it's just, it's really a neat group of people. And it's really fun to watch how people have done different things. And there's a lot of them. And, uh, you know, I will say this. It's, it's really, it's, it's sort of changed our life because we were kind of, set on things around the house and now we're venturing off and doing stuff you know it brings us to nascar it brings us to country thunder it brings us camping 
And so, you know, when you got a bus sitting out front, it, all you can think about is what am I going to do with it? So it's kind of a cool thing. All I will say is this bus has been a lot of fun and I want to do more of them. I actually love doing the buses. It's, you know, it's kind of a challenge and it keeps, it's different from my regular job. So it's become a kind of a hobby. The only thing that's stopping me from doing that obviously is not having places to have a million buses. So this bus will probably end up going to someone else that wants to give it a good home. And so if you're interested in it and you'd like to talk a little more, maybe even about a different type of bus or something that you want to make custom, it's not going to be top of the line. It's going to be very functional and fun. And um, you can leave a comment on the bottom of this and that would, uh, and then I'll get back to you. I'm really torn because we fall in love with everything we touch. So we're this bus now, we didn't want to keep it, but now we want to keep it, but we're probably going to get rid of it. And we're even debating if we even want to take it out because we'd like to have somebody that buys it be the first person to use it, you know, kind of thing. So it's really more of a love of building them. And, um, and we've got our original bus that, we've, that we could travel in that we have fun in. So these are just hobbies and it keeps me busy. And with the painting, I want to make sure that anyone that's interested in this guy, it's ArizonaMurals.net. And again, if you leave me a message at all, we can get you com completely connected with him. But you can reach him through that. Phenomenal guy. Very fair price. And he's just an amazing person. And he makes our buses beautiful. That's great. <music>